nucleic acids are polymers called polynucleotides. And all this means is that the monomers of nucleic acids are nucleotides. So we're going to hook nucleotide together to nucleotide together to nucleotide together, and we're going to end up with either RNA or DNA. Each one of the nucleotides has three parts to it. It's going to have a phosphate group, so you're going to see uh, PO4. You are going to see a 5-carbon sugar, which is called a pentose sugar, and that sugar happens to be ribose. And then there are going to be bases. Now, they call them nitrogenous bases because they're holding a nitrogen on them. And those bases are going to be a little bit different in DNA than RNA. The portion of the nucleotide without the phosphate group, if you remove the phosphate group, then that is now called a nucleoside. A nucleoside is just the nitrogenous base and the sugar. When you think of DNA, and I want you to kind of, you know, there's going to be a picture, but when you look at the DNA molecule, it's in a helix. So a lot of times they refer to it as a spiral staircase or, or something like that, but it's in a helical shape. And the sides, the sides where you would hold on to the railing, those are alternating groups phosphate group sugar, phosphate group sugar, phosphate group sugar. The bases that are, have the nitrogen are what would be the steps. And we'll find out in just a minute that they have to pair up in a certain way um, in order to keep the width of the molecule the same from top to bottom. There are actually two families of nitrogenous bases. We have the pyrimidines. Now, pyrimidines have a single ring, and I'm going to show you the picture in just a minute. But some of these bases have two rings to their structure, and some of them have a single ring. Pyrimidines, the cytosine and thymine, they have a single ring. I always think of it as the bigger the word, the smaller the base. So pyrimidine is the bigger word, and it's got just one ring. Purines, this is adenine and guanine, they have got a six-membered ring fused to a five-membered ring. So they're going to have two rings in their structure rather than one. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose. Remember, I told you that they're a little bit different with the oxygen group. And in RNA, we have ribose. Both of them are five carbon sugars. So they are called pentose sugars. So the nucleoside, now the nucleotide is going to be the nucleoside with the phosphate group. So they're just breaking it down into two different names. Now here's your picture. So on the side, you can see that here's a two ring structure. The bases are in the middle. And on the ends are the phosphate group sugars, phosphate group sugars, phosphate group sugars, phosphate group sugars. But in the middle, we have got either two rings or one. So this one has got two rings. This has got one, one, and one. When they blow it up, you can see the PO4. That's the phosphate group. Then it's a cyclopentane. It's a pentose sugar, so it's five-sided and then you have the base. If we looked at those a little bit further, you can see that the single ones are cytosine and thymine. RNA does not have thymine. Instead, it has uracil. And the purines with the two, you can see they have got a five carbon attached to a six carbon. So it looks like a, a cyclopentane that is attached to a cyc I mean, a hexo, a, um, yeah, a hexo, I mean, a hexo, a cyclohexane. I can't think of what I'm saying. Okay, and then your sugars, they, they've blown them up here. What you need to realize is that part of the problem of working on this molecule when it was worked out the shape was determining how it stayed uniform in width the entire length. And so um, I need to start another slide, but we'll start right there.